How did England have four kings in one year? Why do we call cows beef once they're on the table? And where's the best place to murder your brother and take his crown? The Kings and Queens of England. The Normans kill each other. 1066 is considered the most significant year in English history. It witnessed four kings, the end of England's first ruling dynasty, the rise of another, and a change in the English way of life. In January, King Edward the Confessor died with no children, opening the field for the most powerful claimant to take the throne. Halley's Comet blazed through the sky and the people believed it was an omen. But of what? Harold Godwinson. Harold was a powerful earl, son of Edward's top advisor and brother to the queen. As a young man, he was shipwrecked in northern France and was aided by William, Duke of Normandy, in exchange for an oath that Harold would support William's claim to the English throne when the time came. On his deathbed, King Edward awoke from a coma just long enough to point to Harold as his successor, and the English nobility proclaimed him king. Outraged at this betrayal, William of Normandy immediately began to prepare for invasion. Harold also had to deal with invasions from his own brother, Tostig, and Harold Hodrada, King of Norway. He defeated both, but William proved to be a stronger opponent. In October, William's army arrived in England and the deadly skirmish became known as the Battle of Hastings. Harold was killed on the field, most likely by an arrow striking him in the eye. Edgar Etheling. In turmoil after Harold's battlefield death and facing Norman invasion, the council elected 13-year-old Edgar, the last surviving male of the royal house of Wessex, to be king. He was never crowned. Being too young to lead an army and with no older relatives to fight for him, Edgar stood little chance of resisting William of Normandy. One by one, nobles abandoned Edgar and pledged loyalty to William, whose conquest now seemed inevitable. By December, Edgar had no choice but to submit to William. Now deposed, Edgar was held as William's prisoner for some time, but eventually escaped to exile. Edgar attained the great age of 73, fueled by his lust for revenge. He spent the rest of his life in futile attempts to regain his lost crown. The House of Normandy. William I. William the Conqueror, sometimes called William the Bastard, was a descendant of Rollo, the Viking warrior who held Paris hostage in 911 and was given northern France as a ransom. The area became known as Normandy because it was ruled by Northmen. William was the illegitimate son of Robert I by his mistress, and he inherited the dukedom at the age of seven. Norman nobles struggled to control the child duke, but as he matured, William proved himself to be a powerful and ruthless leader. He acquired a strong ally by marrying Matilda of Flanders. His claim to the English throne was through his great-great-aunt, Emma of Normandy. He was crowned King of England on Christmas Day in 1066. William brought with him Norman nobles who built castles and flaunted their wealth, becoming the new ruling class of England. This is why many English words for food have a French name when they're on the table, but an Anglo-Saxon name when they're in the field, such as beef and cow, pork and pig, mutton and sheep. William built an imposing fortress on the River Thames, the Tower of London. York and the north of England resisted Norman rule, so William staged a campaign of terror and brutality. He sent his army north to destroy villages, burn farmland, and kill every person and animal they came across. Famine ensued, forcing many northerners to resort to cannibalism. It would take decades for the area to recover, and the harrowing of the north was a strong warning to others not to rebel against their new Norman overlords. William also knew religion was a great way to suppress his uneducated and superstitious subjects, so he had impressive cathedrals built around the country. His strong leadership did create some stability, though. He built castles along the wild Welsh border and made a truce with the King of Scotland, Malcolm III. Norman nobles married into powerful Anglo-Saxon families, allowing the melding of cultures. William ordered the creation of the Doomsday Book, 
which inventoried all of the lands and properties in his kingdom, a massive achievement for the time which made tax collection much easier and enriched the crown. William spent the last years of his life in Normandy indulging his massive appetite. While riding, he hit his large stomach on the pummel of his saddle, an injury that, within a few days, proved fatal. At his funeral, his stomach burst open and the priest had to rush the funeral rites to escape the stench. Despite his undignified end, William is considered one of the most important kings of England. William II William I's will gave his two kingdoms to his two eldest sons. The first, William Rufus, aka the Red, was given England, while the second, Henry, was given Normandy. Their younger brother, Robert, got only 5,000 pounds. None of the brothers were satisfied, and all three plotted and fought in an attempt to have it all. Eventually, the brothers got tired of the fray, Robert went on crusade, and William and Henry made a tentative peace. William was not popular among among his people. He taxed them heavily and lacked the strength of his father. And he was a homosexual who never married, a great sin in the religious Middle Ages. While out hunting with his brother Henry, William was shot by an arrow and killed. Nothing is certain, but murder was obviously suspected. William's body was left in the woods until a group of peasants brought it to Winchester in a wheelbarrow. Once there, the king's body was refused a Christian burial. Henry I. After his brother's death, Henry raced to the castle where, with sword drawn, he demanded access to the crown jewels. The council quickly named him king. His brother Robert was supposed to be next in line for the crown of England, but when he tried to press his claim, Henry had him imprisoned for the rest of his life. Henry claimed to have holy powers and began a tradition of touching for the king's evil, laying hands on victims of tuberculosis to cure them that continued until the 1700s. He promoted capable people to positions in his strong central government, knowing that a made man would be more loyal than an aristocrat. He and his queen, Matilda of Scotland, had two children, a daughter, also called Matilda, who is married to the Holy Roman Emperor, and a son, William. After so many conflicted successions, King Henry took no chances and had all his barons swear loyalty to William as his successor. At 17, the crown prince and other young men of the court had a raucous party on board the White Ship. The passengers and crew were all drunk, and the ship crashed on the rocks. Everyone on board drowned. Their cries could be heard on land all night, but no one could save them in the dark. It is said that King Henry never smiled again. He tried to make nobles swear loyalty to his daughter Matilda, but they were reluctant, as they didn't believe a woman could rule. Henry was plagued by nightmares of the royal crisis that would follow his death, which came at the age of 58, after he ate a toxic lamprey fish. House of Blois Stephen, with Matilda far away in Anjou, her cousin Stephen of Blois sailed to England to claim the throne. He was a grandson of William the Conqueror by one of his daughters, Adela. Stephen was supposed to have been on the white ship when it sank, but he had a bout of upset stomach that kept him ashore. He had the support of the barons, who recognized that he was weak and would do nothing to stop them doing as they pleased. Matilda gathered support to press her claim, and England was divided between the two. Stephen confiscated lands from the nobles and emptied the treasury in an attempt to bolster support and keep hold of the crown. In 1141, Matilda's army captured Stephen and Matilda was crowned queen. The House of Normandy, Matilda. The Empress Matilda was the first queen of England in her own right. She had spent most of her life in Germany at the court of her late husband, the Holy Roman Emperor, where she was very popular. There, the emperor's every word was law. So when the barons of England demanded that she swear a coronation oath to treat her subjects fairly, she refused. Her imperious attitude was intolerable to the English, so they tossed her out and had Stephen back as their king. Matilda remained in England for several 
several years plotting to regain her throne and pass the torch on to her son, Henry, who continued to war with Stephen. When Stephen's own son, Eustace, died suddenly, Stephen had had enough. He made Henry his adopted son and heir and died shortly thereafter, making way for a new dynasty that would dominate England in the Middle Ages, the House of Plantagenet. Check out the next video to find out. How did England have four kings in one year? Why do we call cows beef once they're on the table? And where's the best place to murder your brother and take his crown? Check out the next video to find out Why do English people hold up two fingers at someone who pissed them off? Richard the Lionheart, hero king or complete fool? And if you make your wife mad enough, will she raise an army and have you murdered?